The federal government's federal carbon tax is only in its first year, and at $20 a ton, it's a political lightning rod. Now, a new report is arguing that the feds need to hike that carbon tax to $210 per ton by 2030 if this country wants any chance of meeting its Paris emissions targets. Chris Reagan is the chair of Canada's Ecofiscal Commission. He joins me in studio now. Hi, Mr. Reagan. Nice to see you. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming in. Can you explain for myself and our viewers why you reached the conclusion you did? Yeah. So let's back up a bit. We, we have been talking about pollution pricing and carbon pricing for several years, but many people have told us that we don't have to use carbon pricing to reduce emissions. You know, some people say, well, you can use economy-wide regulations. You can use subsidies. You can even use industry-focused regulations. And, you know, people talk about those. So we wanted to take that seriously. And we said, all right, let's run a horse race. Let's do a big modeling exercise, modeling the economy and the emissions. But let's take three very different packages of policies all of which can get us to our 2030 targets. So one is basically carbon pricing with a rising carbon price. One is economy-wide regulations, not pricing, regulations and subsidies. And the third package is industry-focused regulations. So this is, these are promoted by the people who like to say, well, we can kind of keep consumers and voters out of it. We'll just target the heavy, heavy industry and throw some subsidy in as, in as well. So in our modeling exercise, we designed these three packages, as I said, to achieve the 2030 target. So they can all do it, but they've got a very different price tag. And the, our measure of cost here is we look at income per Canadian and we track it through time. By the time we get to 2030, when all of those emissions reductions have been achieved, there's a big difference in income per Canadian. The carbon pricing one performs best, and income per Canadian is $3,000 higher in 2030 than the worst of the other two alternatives. Why is that? Well, and what's it regulations tend to be very intrusive. Governments are reaching in and telling households, you know, that they have to switch out their furnace or businesses, you, you know, you have to adopt this technology and you have to do it at this time schedule. Those tend to be quite intrusive and they tend to be very expensive as a result. Subsidies tend to be very expensive because you have to raise taxes in order to finance the subsidies. The carbon price advantage is two things. Number one, you put a carbon price in place, you ramp it up, and then people can respond the, the way they want, the way that fits their situation. And everybody's going to respond, small businesses, large businesses, households, they're all going to respond differently, but they're going to respond in the way that minimizes their own costs. So that keeps costs down. And the other advantage of carbon pricing is that it generates revenue that you can give back to the people in the form of rebates. And that's a huge advantage. Is your assessment of the price's economic, overall economic impact predicated on the idea that it is rebated? That the, or that the, that the revenue goes back that's, somewhere? That's an important part. So if you just had a carbon price by itself and you did something unspecified with the revenues, that would not be nearly as good for the economy as taking those revenues and either using them to reduce taxes or just give them right back to you as a rebate. That's, a, that's actually a better way for the economy. And how high did you determine the price should go in order to meet those targets, which we are right. not independently ass- as independently assessed on track to meet at this point? Well, in fact, that, just to start at the end there, that's, that was our starting point for this report, is that we look at the current set of policies in place project them forward, they don't get us to 2030. So there's a gap. That's why the title of this report is Bridging the Gap. There's a gap between where we're going to be with current policies and where we want to be. So we need more policies or more stringent policies. So that's the first really important message. Um, But the question, which I'm now (laughs) losing track of... (laughs) The the question is, how high does the price have to go in order to bridge that gap? What's your assessment? So the current carbon price is rising to $50 per ton by 2022. We then continue it at $20 per ton per year up to 2030. So gasoline becomes 40 cents more expensive by 2030 than it is today. But the rebates also grow. So in Alberta, the per person rebates by 2030 are $2,000 per person. In Saskatchewan, they're $4,000 per person. In Ontario, they're $800 per person. So gasoline is more expensive. Home heating fuel is more expensive. Natural gas is more expensive along this trajectory. But rebates also grow.
And that combination is very powerful. So let me ask you, because we've, we've spoken before about the government's difficulties in, uh, difficulty in communicating yeah. a price on carbon and its potential effectiveness. Uh, and we've seen the evidence of that through all of the political yeah. debate and discourse over the last few years. They've had trouble with it at you know twenty dollars a ton, thirty dollars yeah. a ton. What are they going to do? How how do they need to communicate it in order to get the message across that that high a price is necessary? So this is not easy. I mean, I've been doing my best to communicate how these policies work for five years, and you know, I I'm not sure we're there yet. Right? They're tough things to communicate. It's tough to communicate number one why a carbon price works. Uh, it's tough to communicate why it makes sense to give rebates back. I think a lot of people think that's a little weird, right? You're making me pay more for gasoline, but you're giving me a check in the mail every that quarter. Work? Why does that yeah. make sense? I think it does make sense, and I think we've seen it in other places, and it makes sense. But it's tough. And it's also tough, and this, is, this is, plays a central role in our report as well, that um, there's an irony here that the policy that is the most visible, which is a carbon price, because it you know that it goes right to your gasoline price, right? You saw the, the stickers that Doug Ford put in Ontario, right? That's a carbon price driving up the price of gasoline. Very visible. Um, but the irony here is that if you want to use policies that are more hidden, that are less visible, they end up costing Canadians more because you crank up these policies in a very hidden way on, on firms, they pass on their costs to consumers. You also have to raise taxes to pay for those subsidies. So people don't see the direct connection from the policy to those higher taxes, but they are there. And that's really what explains in our results why carbon pricing is cheaper. So how do you navigate that as a political party or political entity that wants to be reelected? And, and I highlight, for example, it's not just the government. The NDP was saying the price has to rise, but wouldn't pin it to a specific number right, during the right. campaign, right? There is a fear of the backlash. Right, I, I agree. And uh, I mean, I guess fortunately for me, I'm not the politician, so I don't <laughs> have to solve point. that problem. But but I you know give my advice whenever it is asked. But I. I guess maybe I'm naive, but I kind of like to believe that the more we talk about this, the more we talk with Canadians, you know, I, I think that helps. I think we've got to be very truthful with Canadians about a bunch of things. Number one, we've got to be truthful with Canadians that we need more policy or more stringent policies to get to 2030. Okay? We've got to be very clear about that. We need to be truthful about the fact that there are choices. You don't have to use carbon pricing. You can use regulations, you can use subsidies, you can use a mix and match. But let's also be truthful about the price tag because there's very different price tags on those policies. And the more you choose non-carbon pricing policies, those hidden ones, the more costs go up. And if you're gonna ramp up all of these policies to achieve 2030 targets and even more ambitious targets beyond, then those hidden costs they start to really rise, and then they start to be not so hidden at all. So, and that, then they might really undermine support for climate policy in general. So I, the economist within me says it's a little crazy to knowingly introduce policies that are higher cost than the ones that we could use. Why not use lower cost policies if they are available? Before I let you go, we have been speaking, you know, for, for months now about this, and there is, seems to be a little bit of a cleavage between, you know, you and I as individuals who have to put gas in our cars and people who live in rural communities such as farmers. There are farmers in Saskatchewan who have really wet crops this year and their carbon tax went through the roof. Yeah. So there's a specific ask even from the NDP in that province to get a bigger rebate. Like is there more fine tuning of the policy as the price goes up that needs to occur in order to address some of the discrepancies yeah. that exist between people where they live, and also businesses versus yeah. individuals? Great question. So I think the more the carbon price rises, the more it's going to be really important for us to talk about what happens to the revenues. And you know, so a stronger political case and economic case, frankly, for having those rebates. That's the first point. The second point is on, on the sort of fine-tuning details. We're at the beginning of a major policy uh, design here. Um, and I think there will be tweaking of this policy for years. So we can adjust the rebates to be more generous in rural areas or more generous in the north as we do in the income tax system. I think there will be sensible adjustments to be made. But it doesn't change the underlying argument for saying let's have a carbon price in place because that's the lowest cost way to do this and then let's return a big chunk of those revenues, maybe all, in the form of rebates and that's going to help generate political support. All right, I'll leave it there. Thanks, Mr. Reagan. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thanks. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel 
or click the link for another video.